David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about solids, CE 3303. We're in chapter section 12.9, statically indeterminate beams, method of superposition. This is really a nice, clean way to solve statically indeterminate problems, which we covered earlier in the semester. This is related to the uh, use of Appendix C, pages 8, 12, and 13 in the back of the book. The setup is a cantilevered beam, a propped cantilever, what I call, of this dimensions, 10 feet long, uniformly distributed load of two kips per foot, and a mid-span concentrated force of eight kips. So we look at it, we have three unknowns, the moment at A, the reaction at A, and the reaction, vertical reaction at B. AX is zero, there's no zero, no X forces on it, but I only have two equilibrium equations with which to solve this problem sum of moments and sum of forces in the y direction. So it's said to be have one degree of indeterminacy and one redundant force. But never fear, superposition is here. I want to break it into two parts. Break the loading situation. I want to remove the redundant at B. I could remove another redundant, but it would uh, uh, make it more difficult. This is the easiest, B is the easiest one to remove. And I can then have a, a cantilever, a simple cantilever with these loads on it, and I can calculate the deflection at the end. Then I can remove all the external loads and replace the redundant, put the redundant back in there. So then I'd have a cantilever with a concentrated load that is the reaction at B in the Y direction acting as a concentrated load upward on the end of the beam. Figure that deflection. So from Appendix C I get this first part of this load which is a concentrated load P in the midspan of a cantilevered beam. The deflection is that from the equation. The general equation is this. It simplifies down to the maximum deflection as being out there at the end of the beam, which is the value I want. Just did it this way just to show you <clears throat> how you, with that appendix C, and the equations there, you can get the deflection at any point. So substituting real numbers, my numbers are I have eight kips, the beam is 10 feet long, square it, divided by 45, 48EI, and uh, X is 10 also, so this expression, expression evaluates out to negative 833.3 repeating over EI. Add in the uh, uniformly distributed load on a cantilever and the maximum deflection at the end is equal to negative WL fourth over ADI. Plug the numbers in, I get that's negative 2500 over EI. Then the redundant part of it is put the redundant force in there, evaluate the deflection due to a cantilever beam, concentrated load at the end is equal to PL cubed over 3EI, it's coming from appendix C, that's equal to BY, my unknown force, times 10 cubed over 3EI is equal to 333.3 .3 repeating over EI BY. Now I just want to say that these two deflections added together have got to be equal and offset by this reaction, by this deflection. So delta 1 is the sum of these two is equal to, the absolute value is, delta 2, the deflection due to the redundant force, negative 833.3, 2500 is equal to 333.3. BY, BY is equal to 3333, the sum of these two numbers, 
divided by 333.3. Threes are wild. That's equals to 10 kips. So the AY force is 18 kips. It's interesting to note that the stiffness of the fixed connection at fixed support condition at A kind of sucks force towards it. If this was just a simple span beam, these loads would be equally distributed and I would have half of 20 plus half of 8, so I would have 14 kips at each end. To say the stiffness of the support at A sucks four of those kips away from B and towards A. And so that makes sense to me, common sense wise. I can once again solve for the reaction at, M, at the A support that just by an equilibrium equation, some of the moments I get the moment at A is negative 40 foot kips. I can do shear and moment diagrams if I want, find my maximum shear and maximum 